Andy, uh, we wish you the very best of luck with that. While we've got you on the line, of course, it would be rude not to ask a little bit about football. Um, we are being linked with every name under the sun right now. Um, and we've had some of the names chucked at us today, like uh, uh, Juan Bissaka, Pablo Sanchez. Dybala, uh, Sancho, Harry Maguire. Um, for you, what are the key areas of the team which Ollie would like to strengthen? Now, have you heard anything about any of those names or any more? I, I know for a fact, and I'd rather not stray too far into speculation, that they're looking for a right-back, a central defender, a midfielder, a striker. United like the idea of young, hungry players. I think there's going to be a shift in the transfer policy, maybe away from your Radam Alfalcaos, for example, your Bastian Schweinsteigers, big names who haven't worked as well as people hoped. Uh, the club are adamant that there are very good players who want to join Manchester United. Oli Gunnar likes the idea of youth. Uh, I've looked closely at the United players who are on loan. I think two have done very, very well. That's Dean Henderson at Sheffield United who went there a couple of weeks ago. And Axel Tuanzebe has done very well at Aston Villa. I interviewed him at the start of the season. Really bright lad, captain Manchester United at every level apart from the first team. And there are hopes within the club that he can make it as a first-team player. He's very, very highly rated. I think what you'll see in the next few weeks is a million names linked to United. There's more truth in some than others. The club won't really say anything. It's not really in their interest because it drives the price up. And what you get is a lot of agents. They want their players to be linked to Manchester United. So you'll see stories come out and you'll think, there's not really any truth in that. that. That's the agent trying to create an auction situation. They definitely need to bring players in. The mood's not good. We can't pretend otherwise. But there is money there. This isn't Ajax who are looking at dismantling the team. This is Manchester United. Still very attractive to a lot of players. And I think you'll see several departures as well. Lads who not really working out for them. People like Antonio Valencia, obviously, is, is going and has gone. Um, Marwan Fellaini has gone as well. So I think we'll see quite a lot of new faces for next season. And I think the mood will lift off the floor and there'll be a bit more optimism come the start of the season. But it's a long way to go. City finished 32 points ahead of United. I, I'd like to think that that gap will be closed next season, but I'd be surprised if there is a, a, a title bid. I just like the idea of... Oli Gunnar being backed and going with Manchester United principles of attacking players, of younger players, and seeing evidence of an improvement because the end of the season was so frustrating. It wasn't just the results, it was the football. And mm -hmm. You watch these brilliant results when he came in, beating Tottenham away, Arsenal away, Chelsea away. Paris was obviously the highlight. And you're thinking, he's onto something here. I'd love him to succeed. I like the people around him. I like Mike Phelan, but... United's recruitment could have been much better in the last six years. They've got to get it right this summer. It's a really, really important summer. Certainly is. Andy, absolute pleasure as always to uh, uh, have you on MUTV. I didn't even get time to ask you about your recent meeting with Maradona, who's one of my boyhood footballing heroes. I'll have to uh, twist your arm and get you to tell me some stories about that when I next see you, mate. But for now, uh, Andy, thanks a lot. And, uh, all the best with that bike ride. I'm sure we'll see you before that, but uh, from all of us, I uh, wish you the very best for that. Cheers, Andy. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Uh, great stuff from Andy Mitten there. Remember, you can get involved and help him on that fantastic cause by visiting that Just Giving uh, website of his. OK, we're going to get some uh, emails and tweets uh, on now. This is the first email of the night from Mark in Witham. Uh, he says, Ollie has the right idea. We need a young British team that shouldn't be paid ridiculous wages. Keep their feet on the ground, get them all to wear the club blazers and represent the club the way it should be presented with pride, passion and commitment to achieve success. Uh, do what Fergie did and don't let them talk to the press till they are a bit older. Uh, we need a complete restart and clear out. Uh, Mates, you like that change that Ollie brought in? He made us sort of wear the <coughs> team blazers again. again. Know, yeah. Be mm. smart, present yourself well. Uh, and that pride, passion and commitment is a key... Of course it is. No, isn't it? All fans want to see that. Sorry, they're, they're, the, they're the three things that shouldn't even be questioned no. to you. Should when be you, there you anyway. They should be there anyway, and, yeah. and, and, and rightly so, when you're representing the club. 
you know, when you, you, when you come here to work and it is work, um, you know, you've got to make sure you look, look right and, and, and wear the blazer and wear it with pride. Yeah, I mean, he's had a good teacher all the same. Yeah, I like he has. Hasn't he? Yeah, it's tradition. Yeah. Under Smart, under the gaffer. Yeah. You know, wear your, wear your blazer. Yeah. You know, you've got an identity. Uh, I'll take this one from Twitter. It's from Neil Crowd, who says, uh, I think United should bring in Aldevira this summer. Don't just focus on Maguire and Kula Bailey, because if we get neither, we'll be left with nothing and have the same uh, centre-back problem next season. Do you like Aldevira, Paddy? Oh, Would I think he... he's a type of centre-half I, I wouldn't want to play against. He's going to hurt you, isn't he? He's a good I think that, I think, yeah, I think that plays a big part in football today, but the speculation between now and... God knows when it's going to be incredible, Next isn't month. it? Yeah. Going to be incredible. Yeah. yeah. Good players. Very good players. Good. Well, but if, if, if a player's mentioned with United, you want him to be a top class player. Yeah. You don't want him to oh, be. Oh, 100%. Mm. I would have thought by now, so, Paddy, that all he's already said who he wants. Oh, I would have thought without question, yeah. What yeah. he's asked for. He's a good, he'll be a good Unless idea. Unless something comes out of the fire and you think, wow. Yeah. You know, he's desperate to come to United, then. Mm. I think Ollie will have already put his names in and said, right, I need these, these players. These are your targets. You can try and get rid of these or you know, part X, whatever it is. Just uh, get players and get fresh faces in. Big changes ahead. Uh, just going to read this email and then we're going to go to Chris in Spain. So, Chris, be patient. We're coming to you. Uh, Paul from Middlesbrough emailed to say there's no getting away from it. The changes do need to be made, but things can and do change very quickly in football. Uh, you think Liverpool actually finished 25 points behind Man City last season and six behind us. So there's yeah. a massive yeah. swing, isn't it? Yeah. An yeah. unbelievable swing uh, in point tallies uh, between us and the Scousers. Uh, OK, let's take our next caller then. Uh, we'll go back to Spain, uh, this time to speak to Chris. Hi, Chris. Hi, guys. Hi, Chris. Evening. Um... I've got a word for the club at the moment. I know some people have got other words, but the one I've got is ineptitude. If you go back to the game against Spurs at Old Trafford in September, that first half, Mourinho had sorted out the tactics. We were way better. They couldn't pass to a, pl a player. They couldn't run into a space. And they couldn't shoot. So we've got too many of the wrong kind of players. They might look good on paper, Pogba looked good at Juventus, but did he look good playing for us week in, week out? I don't think he did. Now that might be the other players not running, it might be him not passing, but they're just the wrong players. Now David mentioned before, and Sammy mentioned last week, how do you get rid of these players? And I have a suggestion, and people won't really like this. Bel De Gea, Pogba, Rashford. Range 300 million. Then you can give Marshall away with cornflakes packets. Um, use that money to help pay the wages these players you need to offload and still give you cash to go and buy some good players. And on top of that 300 million, the club can add whatever they're going to put in, 200 million this year, whatever it's going to be, give you a nice bunch of cash to go and get all the players we all talk about. The young players, not the big names. I've been trying to remember the first big name player Sir Alex bought, and I'm actually still struggling. And I've been trying to go through the team since the late 80s. And I can't really think, where was that first big-name player that he went and bought? Not was it, it wasn't. They were, all, they were all nothing much. But the second part of this problem is the board and Ed Woodward. You know, on occasions they haven't bought enough players. They've certainly not bought the right players. And I'm worrying about this. You've all been talking today about Maguire. But company has just left City, hasn't it? Yeah. If City decides to go for him, they're not going to quibble the price. They're not going to quibble the wages. If the manager wants him, they'll go and get him. And if you were Maguire, and you had a chance to go to guaranteed Champions League, playing for the Championship every year, as against coming to a team that's really struggling, 
Which would you choose? Yeah, so it's an interesting question, and the Maguire debate has been going on, Maisie. Um, I guess if you're trying to make that deal happen, and Maguire does have a choice to make, and it probably will be the case, mm -hmm. he'll be an in-demand player, and it's going to be the case with all of the signings. It's not just going to be us going for these players, it's going to be no. all of the, the big clubs in Europe. Um, you're still selling Manchester United to a player, aren't you? Uh, the biggest club in the world, globally followed by 660 million, whatever mm -hmm. it is, the figure right now, with a huge history and the potential to get back to where it belongs, which is right at the top. Plus, I guess you could say to someone like Maguire, um, you could go to City and you'd be contesting with Laporte and Stones and Otamendi for a start. Or you know, if he does come here, he gets come straight in, in there. You, be straight in it there. might be an argument. You say you come in, you'll be your first choice. First choice, give him the captain, sir. He's a leader. You see that at Leicester. And take it from there. You, you have to sell the club, but you don't have to. No, you don't have to sell the club. The club <clears> sells <throat> itself. Yeah, exactly. Um, and he could be the first cog in the wheel to get this club to where we want it to be. And all he can say, you know, he can, he can sell the story that way. Yeah. Because that's what, that's... That's now what it is. It's a rebuild that you want players in that can say, do you know what? I was part of that club that, you know, reborn itself in 2019, 20. Yeah. It's not so a player thinks oh, Man United are not going to be in Champions League anytime soon. The club's too big with too many resources not to let that happen. Yeah. It's going to happen hopefully next <coughs> season, maybe the season after. Um, but football goes in cycles, doesn't it, Paddy? I mean, when you were playing, I mean, different big, big, teams have different strengths. I know, but there's certain clubs where football shouldn't go in cycles. Yeah. I'm talking the likes when you look at Manchester United, Liverpool. They should always be in the Champions League. I mean, City are going to be strong now for quite some time. They, they'll always be in the Champions League for some time to yeah. come. There's always four or five English clubs you're thinking, well, we've got a great chance of being in the Champions League every well, season. Well, we've got six now, haven't we? Long We're all spell. very competitive. The top, yeah. the, the two are leading the way by far. We, we, we all try and catch up with them, but then, as it showed in I the league last season, Spurs, Chelsea, them. ourselves yeah. and Yeah, Arsenal. you've got to get above them, but I'll tell yeah. you, you, you look at the Champions League, and I bet the people that run the Champions League are disappointed that United are not there. Yeah. Because of the support they've got worldwide, they'll be disappointed that United's not there. Yeah, we're um, disappointed, of course. I think Paul, <laughs> Paul gets a lot of stick as well. Yeah, I mean that comment he said about selling Pogba, yeah. De Gea, and Rashford—that will be unpopular. I, I imagine that's not really the majority of fans. Some might agree, but Paul's not a bad player. He's not, no. and he does get a hell of a lot of stick because of where he is and the way he acts. Yeah, but do you know what? That's just his demeanour. He is mm. a top, top player. Yeah. You've seen that he's a top player, but you need to get that out of him. Eight out of ten games, nine yeah, out of yeah. ten games. He should be absolutely running that midfield. He should, He yeah. did do it for Juve, and he should be doing it for Man United. For some reason, he's not doing it as consistent as what you know he was doing. Now, is that because the players that are around him aren't good enough to help him? Or um, is he just having a bad season? He had a great World Cup. He's had a long, long, long... Well, his best goal scoring season, didn't he? In terms of his goal yeah. output, it was the best he's had. <clears throat> and it, it is a long season for him, you know, coming straight off the World Cup, winning the World Cup, and uh, coming straight back into the Premier League. Yeah. There's no respite for him, or for a lot of the players. But yeah. And I know that's the same for every other team. I understand that. Yeah. But I think he gets a hell of a lot of unfair criticism at time when I think, do you know what, there's, there's other players on that pitch that are a lot less... Um, Constructive in the way they yeah. play. It's because you know, sell stories and sell head, uh, make headlines. Yeah, like like Guardiola said after they won the league, didn't they? The headlines next day are about Pogba. Yeah. Because the Man United story is a bigger one. Always is, always will be. Uh, okay, we're going to take another break. Uh, keep your calls, tweets, and emails coming in. MUTV at MUTV.com. Uh, uh, get them in on Twitter as well. Uh, 01612361968 is the phone number to call, uh, and we will get to more of them after this break. Uh, welcome back to the Paddy Crown Show. Maisie and Paddy here uh, with me, taking your calls, tweets and emails. We're going to go to Eccles now to speak to Lee. He's our next caller. Hi. Hello. Hi, Lee. Good evening. Hi, uh, um, I just want to um, talk about um, 
who we should get rid of and who, who we should bring in, really. <coughs> okay, um, Lee. I think we should get that back back from Palace, you know, um, from the sack Yeah. And um, we need a new centre back. Now, everyone keeps going on about Maguire, but um, I also like Aki from um, Bournemouth. Yeah, that's a good show. Yeah. He's mm-hmm. done well, yeah. hasn't he, for Bournemouth? Yeah, he's done exceptionally well. But so, like, obviously, if you, get, you could get two in, but you'd have to get rid of two as well, wouldn't you? Now, Sessegon for the left as well. I think Sessegon's OK for the left. That's a man at Fulham. That's yeah. like David was saying, we could yeah. do the left back to push Shaw, yeah? Yeah. Um, I think on, on the right wing, um, we've got Chong there to push Lingard, but we could get another one, um, but that's open to debate that one, but I think Lukaku might go up front, so the main one would be like then Bappy, but that, that, that would be a mega sign in that one. <laughs> yeah. we, we can That'd dream. Be dream that, that, that would be a statement of intent, that. 100%. <laughs> oh, and Bappy, a uh, terrific player, that lad. Yeah. He's only a kid as well, isn't he? I know, he's got so much ahead of him. Lee, uh, it's a great shout. Um, we'd love a Bappe. Will that happen? Doubtful, but uh, we can dream. <laughs> we can dream. Uh, Lee, thanks for that. But certainly wan we agree there. Nathan Naki is a, an interesting shout, isn't it? Because he's someone who's proven in the Premier League. Mm-hmm. Um, not the biggest for a centre-half, a shade under six foot, but yeah. he's quick, agile, reads yeah. the game well, doesn't he? You having that one as a potential? You're trying to sell him, are you? <laughs> I, I like him, he's good, yeah. He's a good Quite. player. Well, he's decent, yeah, but he's, I don't think... Do you think he's United level? Mm. Would you rather have Harry Maguire? Yes. Out of the two, yeah. yeah. You'd take Maguire over Oh, over yeah. 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 Um, and he mentioned there, Lee, didn't he? Potential right winger. I think Oli uh, is after a right winger um, to put the pressure on those vying for that place. Mm-hmm. Lingard's played there a bit. Tahith Chong, obviously, we hope he emerges, but. Still, he's a young lad with a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of talent. To do. A very talented young man. Yeah. Mm. Ideally, if you can get two players for each position, and then when you play well, you stay in, and then the other one's got a fight to get back in. And yeah. you, you've got to look behind uh, yeah, you and exactly, make sure absolutely. I don't want him to get back in. I want you to stay. Absolutely. You know, yeah. Challenge. Luke, Luke's in a position. I know he's one player of the year this year, and you know, players play, but I, I, I still think there's still more for him to give. Yeah. yeah, you know, I know he's had a decent season this season, but if you get somebody else in that can push him, you know, yeah, Dennis, Phil, Phil there, Patrice in there, you always have players, you know, going for each other. Yeah, and I, th- I just think, you know, around the around certain areas, you get two players fighting for each other or fighting against each other for that position. It can only be healthy for the club. Yeah, I think if he had a bit of pressure on him, Luke, towards the end of the season, he had a little bit of a wobble the last yeah. two or three games, didn't he? Uh, but he had a, a brilliant season, that's all that, that is for sure. OK, to uh, Norman in Doncaster next. Uh, hi, Norman. Good evening, you OK? Good evening, Norman. Hello, Norm. Yeah, I've been on before a couple of times. Um, I thought we should have signed Vardy a couple of years ago, but that shit's gone now. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. Um, Jack Grealish needs to be signed, whether it's next week after the playoffs. Um, I think he'll, I think Villa will get through, but he's yeah. going to be the next English superstar. He is. Yeah, I like he's got, he's got he, he can get the ball in midfield. He can go back players as though they stood still. He's got a bit of edge about him. He's 23. He's English. He fits out everything, and I think Oli should go for him. Good shot. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good shot. It, it's a really okay. good shot, that. He was... Uh, There's another lad who played against... Play up uh, was really good. Yeah. Um, played for Leeds the other day. I mean, young field, uh, he was decent. There's some good players in the Championship. Yeah. Quality yeah, league. Really uh, good. Yeah. But Jack Grealish, I mean, you just hear him speak about that club. He, he's Villa through and through, isn't he? If he helps Villa get to the Premier League... Yeah. It, it, It'd be a big bid and a big wage to prize him away from his uh, beloved club. But it's Man United, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> so come knocking, so come knocking. Villa could be a little that, bit of a yo-yo team going up and down or whatever. Yeah. But they, they shouldn't be. Villa should be the Premier no, League all the time. Yeah, they're, they're a good team. Got great club. They should he's be played with Axel league. all season, hasn't yeah. he? Yeah. Uh, Axel, uh, well, he's a few injury problems to start season, but Axel's done well there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we can speak well about Absolutely. the club with Axel. Yeah. 
He's got great ability, Grealish. Yeah, yeah. Good football brain as well. He's clever, isn't he? The, yeah. His movements, the yeah, way he yeah. picks the ball Very up, good. and Very his good. interplay is really good. Uh, Norman, that's a great shout. We uh, we well thank you, that. thank you for that. Um, to a few more emails, then this one from Mike, uh, who says we need some experienced leaders in the team. Buying the youngsters is all well and good, but this cycle only works done properly. Uh, so Alex Ferguson got it spot on, and that is a, a good point in terms of. We have spoken a lot about the younger players, Paddy, but... Strong person on the pitch. You, yeah. You I mean, your company is such a leader, yeah, as a strong f- defender. And that's another loss for City. Yeah. His stature on the pitch as Not well. Not just what he does on the pitch, but in that dressing room, in the dress yeah. room on the training sort of pitch, stuff, the example yeah. he set. So, we don't have an that, experienced player like that. Again, you hark back to Alderweireld as perhaps yeah. someone who could show that kind of leadership mm-hmm. quality. Perhaps. It's not there at the moment with United, is it? I don't think we've had it for a while. No. We don't. But there aren't that many natural leaders That's in the pain. game, is yeah. there? It's a, it's a different game, it's a different that is for game, sure. Totally. Uh, this email from Vicky and Ermston, uh, who says, Juan Mata is the perfect example of a player who's committed to the club. Maybe not in his prime now, but he has been used out of position for most of his time here without complaint. He was one player who at least tried against Huddersfield and the week before he was the first in. Uh, God knows how long to score a goal from open play. It was an insult he didn't deserve when Ollie didn't even bring him on as a sub against Cardiff. Other players have performed far worse over the season yet play regularly. Uh, so your thoughts on that one? That's from Vicky and Ermiston. He's a wonderful footballer. Yes, we know that. And you know he's getting... Was he now 31, is he? 31? Totally honest player, Dave. He is a wonderful totally player. player. He is. But you have to understand how, or you have to look at the situation of how well he wants to set up. He's not blessed with, you know... Physique. Not physique or, or real pace. But to unlock defences... Yeah. Phenomenal. Great some player. cracking free kicks as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Great set pieces. Absolutely. He's a top player, he is. Uh, and he's experienced. Yeah. You know, you're looking at experience to stay. It's got sensible get rid of head, isn't he, in yeah. that dressing room? Yeah. And he loves the club, like you say. Yeah. Same as Ander did. And he speaks so well. Uh, and just quickly, this one from Steve Hepburn. Have Dennis and many lost the plot? Dallo should be the right back, no argument. So, uh, Diogo Dallo, of course, uh, we hope will be the long term right back. Yeah, he's but, but as I said about and Luke Shaw and um, the kid from Fulham, you, you want. People fight for them places. Yes, yeah. So you, yeah. You, know, you can important. bring a pair of them in, mm. or bring him in, and let him, let him scrap over who's going to be number one. Yeah. Right back. You need that competition. I, of Absolutely. course you do. Your team in 99 had that, didn't it? You had two players for every position just about, which is uh, a nice way to, to bring around the chat about this. The big event of the weekend, Maisie, you were involved. Uh, the treble reunion game, how excited are you for it? Uh, about as excited as that picture there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You made sure you get it anyway, What a didn't great we? night. What an absolute top night that was. Yeah. Brilliant. How, you, I love how, it. how do you know? Well, what you remember? From, from what I heard about you, oh, no, no, oh, oh, you oh, the oh, next day. Oh, oh, what people have told me. <laughs> <laughs> he was not? brilliant in the celebrations, oh, Paddy. Oh, running down that line. Absolutely. Celebrating. Um, and Absolutely. it was your dad who told you to get in near the trophy, yeah. wouldn't it? Never miss, never miss the trophy for a picture, does it? It's we? always going to be in every picture, and that's certainly the case um, as we look back on 20 years yeah. ago. Uh, when we won that treble. Of course, here on MUTV, you'll be able to uh, follow the game and uh, all the build up. We'll have loads of interviews as well in the build up to that game, raising money for Man United Foundation against Bayern Munich yeah, Legends. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, they've got a load of players cars. from that game as well, uh, Maisie. So, yeah, uh, it'll be good. Be good. good you know what, do you know what it'll be? Good to just catch up with all the lads, all in the same dressing room, yeah. just ripping ten bells out of each other. <laughs> <laughs> because because well, I know that that's where the camera should be allowed <laughs> in. That the is exactly yeah. where it should it be. The camera should be, but there is so the much room. stuff lying around that dressing room. I think you'd turn the airwaves blue if the cameras were allowed you in. No, we had, we had. You talk about dressing rooms. We had an unbelievable dressing room. Yeah, I tell you. So if if anyone got kicked. You know, it's like kicking the rest of us. Yeah. And you looked after each other. You say.